Charlie Reed do movie podcast and talk about the movies and the Gladiators, blockbusters and all the, the actions and the stars and the red carpets. Is that your Bill Cosby? It kind of did. It was yeah. kind of like when he had constipation, though. Like, eh, Bill Cosby. I don't know. I wasn't trying to do Bill Cosby. Ladies and gentlemen, and now your feature presentation. Gong. Gong. I'm gonging you. It's like the gong show, but opposite. When I gong you, you get you get to stay. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonging you in. I'm, well, I'm here. I'm here and I'm staying. I'm That's not right. Going anywhere. That's a little foreshadowing for what's popping. But before that, mm-hmm. thank you for joining us for episode 32 of the preamble. I one of our hosts, Blake Miggle, accompanied by the future contender. Against Conor McGregor himself, Captain John Dolan. Yep, I will fight him in a pie-eating contest. Who do you think is going to win that fight? The pie-eating contest between me and Conor McGregor? It depends on the pie. Mm, okay, it's okay. It's three rounds of pie. Okay, yeah. yeah, three rounds. First one, everyone's favorite, very easy, approachable pie. Apple pie, right? Yeah, I'm not, very a, I'm not a big fan of apple, so he's got me in that one. Okay, but that's a very, that's a very common approachable pie, though, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. but he's got me in the apple for Let's sure. Let's move it up one notch. Sure. Let's move it up one notch to pecan pie. Pecan pie. Pecan pie. I like it. Uh, it's sometimes a little rich for me. Okay. Um, he might also have me in the pecan pie as well. The last round. Yes. Loaded with flavor, messy as hell, but it tastes so damn good. The infamous triple berry pie. And then, and then that's where I definitely take the lead. That's right. I'm, I'm a fruit guy. I love the, I love, I love the fruit pies. I'm a pie guy, and that's where I will clean up. That's where it's like if it was boxing, which it totally is the same thing, that he's like got you for two rounds, getting those jabs in. You're not ducking and diving. You're not, you're no. not moving the hips. And that third round is boom! But just McGregor's down! The, the, he's the, out! The rope of dope pie selection. Hold up the Dolan's arm. Yeah. It looks like blood's all over it, but it's just yeah. triple berry juice all over your face. The pan, the man, you know, like you gotta, you gotta just, you gotta stay in their contention, kind of draft off them with the pies, and mm-hmm. then at the end take it. So if that's the finale, I got him in that. I was worried you're gonna do some kind of like a like a French silk pie Ooh. or a key lime pie. I don't even count those. See, as I kind of know you though. The chocolate though, There's, the chocolate factor in pie. The chocolate's more of a cake thing. Exactly. Than a pie thing. That's what I'm gonna say. Like those are cakes. They're cakes and pie forms. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm 100%. Yeah. First off, I'm a pie guy over cake. It's no secret. I'm a pie over the cake man because I think there's just more variety. You can get your sweet shit in pie, but I'm all about yeah, like some, so you get some nice fruit. Savory. Yeah. And, yeah, there's so much different. Pumpkin pie. Yeah. I mean, it's like that's another standard. We could have started off with that one yep. as well. Yeah, you know, again, I'm not a big pumpkin guy either. I'm a you know where else though, they eat pie a lot is China. No, they don't. No. They love pie no, in China. I have heard that from my sources. That is, uh, well, who are your sources? <laughs> They're 100% wrong. Pie.com. That's oh. probably a porn site. Probably don't go there or something like that. <laughs> don't do that. For this edition of what's poppin we're talking about china uh, you know the land down the under dessert capital of the world <laughs> known cap- land down under certain the dessert capital of the world Kn- Not- known, known for their delicacies of fortune cookies that, yes that's the chinese the dessert fortune cookie pie i bet you that's yes. a real thing oh, see there be. you go um so a movie's coming out that no one cares about called transformers the last night why I say no one cares about? Because honestly, no one watches these movies in the U.S. However, this is the fifth one in the series, and it's still making a shitload of money. How? Which everyone really knows the reason why is China. Now, it's always this thing, like, how does this movie make money? And you hear, oh, it's just China, 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 China. So I decided this time, Johnny, to do a little research and do some fact-checking. Why is China this market? Why is this dominance here? And a lot of things that happen in U.S. blockbusters, which is just all bullshit, which you have said many times on the show, it's just this manufacturing uh, plant to just produce, to make money. Sure. And there is a lot of, uh, a lot of things that go on behind the scenes, business plans, uh, deals, things they have to add or take out from movies in order to sell into a market that is surpassing U.S. Surpassing Hollywood, you say? Well, they like their cake more than pie. We were lying to. See, we're all just eating our pies here, but they really like, they have layers, seeing the layers of cake. You don't really see pie layers, they see cake layers. Sure. They misled us. So, estimated China box office will surpass the US in 2017, experts predict. Right now, it's pretty even right now, but they are, it is 
on track, especially with some of these blockbusters that are coming out that no one wants to see in the U.S. But why are they making them? Because look at what's how this is doing. One of the top selling movies last year was World of Warcraft internationally, yeah. and no, and that movie made like a twenty five thirty million in the U.S. But it made hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars worldwide, sure. and a big part of that was because of China, who are big video game players. Um, here's a big thing. China actually has more movie theaters than the United, in the United States, and they're popping up like 20 a month out there. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's insane. I can check they're the facts on They're having their like 90s boom for movies that we had. Exactly. Um, now, here's the catch. The U.S., this is where things get a little like manipulative and tricky, is that China wants to be this, this empire, this... The, they want to be looked upon as like the, the the dominant country in the world. Like we are the voice. We uh, we we are the market, right? And they're only allowing thirty four Hollywood movies in a year to show to their audiences. So Hollywood really only has like three different methods in order to sell to China, where it's a flat rate deal, or uh, uh, they add in some ch- very famous Chinese stars or celebrities into their films. Um, and sometimes it's just risk taking. Like they're just they'll they'll put a lot of Chinese uh, tradition or st- or, or, or um, uh, product placement to help sell it to a Chinese market to make put them in good fashion, right? You know, Pirates Three was a big one um, because it was like the third one. It was the first two made a lot of money, and they had a whole. Uh, they were in Singapore, I believe towards the end of the movie and towards that Asian market, right? Then they had um, Red Dawn. We've just talked about it on the show. Um, yeah. Uh, 2012's remake of Red Dawn where the original was North Korea. Is that right? Oh, no, no, no. The original was China. China. And then they changed China it Cuba, yeah. to North Korea. Yeah. And then one of the, the, the big Oscar movie and one uh, Golden Globes was The Martian and, and pretty much that China kind of saves the day in that movie that they found the solution at the end of this. My buddy, the, the person in China and they showing uh, the, the, the Chinese uh, version of their space shuttle program, you know, yeah. celebrating. Um, but was that not in the book, that part? I have no idea. Yeah, I, I didn't read the book. Yeah, me neither. I, nah, read the book. I don't read books. Nah, I read books. I am reading a book. A little side note, though. A little side note. I am reading A Street Cat Named Bob, which we reviewed the trailer for nice. on this one. And uh, the movie I enjoyed so much, I want to read the book because the movie was very f- fun, family-friendly. But I was like, the book's got to be a lot darker than this. But I really enjoyed the movie, but it made me read the book, so I'm reading that book right now. That's, I enjoy that's it. awesome. That's like reverse osmosis. Yeah, I liked it. You are going from the film to the to the book, which is usually you read the book, so then you're going to watch the film. Exactly. So it's very different. And I, I like I your approach. Just switch it up. You know, yeah. it's like a lot of people do that with Game of Thrones. They watch Game of Thrones; it's so good, you start reading the books. You know, yeah. it's a very similar approach. Well, so, go ahead. This discussion is going to lead me to a different discussion that we're going to ramble about. Okay. Maybe next ramble, week. Ramble? Yeah, and we're going to talk about it. It's uh, I um, love the idea of, of this discussion. Obviously, um, if you the quality of the movie suffers because the quantity of the money going over there. Because who are they playing to? Are they playing to our audience or theirs? It seems like they're playing to both. They don't exactly. They're pl- they're they're being they're being safe, and they yeah. just want to play make everyone happy exactly. and put everything in, and then it just becomes a jumbled mess. It's a, they're usually jumbled messes um, that are that are terrible, and the American audiences hate them, and the Chinese audiences watch them. I, but who knows if they like them or not? I would love to see. A Chinese film critic talk about Ooh. the American films that, that come over there. Like a, it would be really cool to watch a show that had an American and a Chinese film critics. Like oh, a Cisco, we gotta we gotta Cis- make friends with uh, a Chinese friend. Exactly, we like a Siskel and Ebert, but like Ooh. you know, cr- uh, crossing cultures. There. Yeah, like the like, John 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 and uh, Kim John and Kim yeah. show, or the J- John Kim Il- <laughs> John Kim Il- film John Kim film John Kim film. <laughs> Like if, if even less Korea. <laughs> if we covered one of a Chinese film, and then they covered an American film. Yeah. And then we and then we we talked about it. I, I think that's a fantastic idea. Yeah. Considering the the two biggest you know movie industries Pat and in Penning. the world. Patent pending. Can't do that. Uh, check it out. Stay tuned to Big Deal Blake as soon as I find a Chinese friend. And then um, we could have a Bollywood guy. In there all my too. Asian friends are Filipino. You know that I've noticed that all my Asian friends are Filipino. I don't think I have one Chinese friend. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't, I'm, yeah. I'm lacking in my Asian friend department. I gotta, I gotta say it straight up. Yeah, but the point is that China, that our films are being affected. And I might say our films, 
let's say, let me rephrase this, the big Hollywood movies, the ones that are supposed intended to make money. Yes, your Marvels, your Star Wars, your, look, look at, um, this is another example on there, the, the Star Wars, the last Star Wars movie, the um, Rogue One. Yeah. Look at the, look at the Asian cast in that movie, right? You had uh, two huge Asian uh, member, uh, uh, cast members, like, uh, Danny Yen. And um, uh, the other guy, I can't remember his name. He was the, the heavy guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. But I'm saying, like, they, that was, again, it's like pandering. Not pandering, but they're like, they throw this in there. And, of course, it makes them look good. Like, the U.S. market. Like, look, we're very diverse, right? We have this, we're accepting of every culture. But it's really a business plan to help make more money, in my opinion. So it's like hitting two birds with one stone. Yeah. But I, I, it was good casting, and the, the guys fit really well, I loved too. It, yeah. So it didn't, it, to me, it didn't sound like, it wasn't like a, a, a money ploy uh, you don't think it had anything to do with it, though? Um, the fact that they were cast, that those people specifically yeah. were cast, or that they were Asian characters? I, the thing I is, that I find it interesting, how do you know they were even Asian characters when they were written originally? No, uh, yeah. I, 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 They're probably I not. I don't know. Uh, to me, it didn't feel forced, though. It, 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 it didn't... Didn't feel the force? It didn't feel the force. And no, I'm not, but I mean... I'm not here on my soapbox saying, like, this is the reason why we had these two Asian characters in the Star Wars, but I mean... You have to admit that there were some producers or influence that that was a drive. Like, even if there was written originally, they were thinking like, oh, that's great because that would be a good business plan for overseas as well. Like, that we can market that easier. Well, they really went with the diverse cast. There, sure. There was like, there wasn't a single, I don't even know. Which is fine with the diverse cast. I don't even know if there, there was like an American in the entire film besides... Um, uh, I don't think there was. The pilot. The pilot. Uh, oh, Yeah. Uh, We're the beard, right? The biggest name, Oscar Isaac. Oh, besides like Oscar Isaac, I don't think there he was. wasn't in that. Yeah, in Rogue One, Bo Darren. Oh mm. no, no, you're right. I was talking Force Awakens. You're right. I, okay. I, I was talking about Force Awakens. Yeah, uh, Rogue One. But yeah. Rogue One's the same thing. They're all. <laughs> yeah, they're, I don't think they're very. I, I know uh, what's his name. Uh, Force Whitaker. Force Whitaker. Yeah. Yeah. There you yeah, go. I Whitaker. talk like this. Exactly. Force Whitaker. See my movie. Like the only American that was in it. Yeah. But I mean, it doesn't. It's, this is not about. I mean, this is a whole different topic. This is not about whitewashing or anything like that. This is about changing media to helping, like taking things that already exist and then adding some product placement, adding things to help for business purposes. This is not a race thing. It's more of like a business thing. It's about money. And they, I see that. Well, let's take go back to the original point, Transformers, where no one in America wants to see this movie, but it's making hundreds of millions of dollars worldwide, right? And I think that's funny. Like, why even release it here in the United States then? Why? And, I mean, its worldwide premiere is going to be in Chicago tomorrow, Tuesday, June 18th. Oh, no, 20th. June 18th. June 20th. Uh, it's going to be the worldwide premiere in Chicago. Like, why not just have it in China? Like, why do we, that, That's we, exactly we what care. my point is. Exactly. Like, 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 maybe you have the resource and funds to make it in America. Maybe there's a lot of Americans. But at the same time, I, th I didn't even see the last Transformers movie, but... In this movie, I think there's a, it takes place in China at some points, or it has a very, there's a lot of, it's like, that's fine. So why not just throw it in China? You know what I mean? Like, no one wants to see it here because. Because it's the worst franchise ever. <laughs> it's the worst. And there's I, no redeeming qualities at all for the entire thing. So I want to get more, I want I think we should do a part two on this and maybe see some big uh, Chinese film that did well in America, you know, and see how they have worked with critics or even like we give it into consideration because the foreign film market is, we, we don't, we only, we only accept it very subtly. I feel here in America, like maybe there's a trailer and then we have a, the foreign film department. Uh, well, I uh, think we're great. I mean, there's so much foreign films in America. Do the foreign they get any exposure though? They're here. They're here and they're, they're, they're to be seen. Uh, and then we, I mean, we give away a best foreign Oscar. Like we, that's what I'm exactly what I'm getting it. at. Like we, I'm saying we appreciate it, but there's no like, okay, put it this way, Transformers, here, right? But everyone's gonna see this in China, right? Is yeah. there a movie out in China that's when it comes here, like everyone's gonna see it here? Uh, what like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was probably the last one. That was, a, that was like 2001. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I, I think, but the Chinese are making films for the Chinese. Ah. I see. There you go. Okay. Americans are making films for the world, and they'll figure out ways to do it. And just play both sides. To play both sides. I mean, yeah, yeah like we're, they make films for everybody. Like it's, Hollywood is like we're the best go to make films. Mm -hmm. And chi China and, uh, well, just let's just put China. I'm not, uh, India is not even, Bollywood is, no, no. is good, but not, 
near West China. Is it China. good? They, they have some good stuff. Okay. Um, but I think the uh, just the best go come to Hollywood because that is where you you can make the most money with your craft. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, but there is Hollywood for a reason. But because yeah. it's a capitalist, you know, industry, they're gonna make movies for whoever's gonna pay money to but see. Sometimes them. empires end. You know, and the Chinese market, they, I think the, the current owner of AMC, who is Chinese, is opening up like a Hollywood in China right now. And it's growing exponentially right now and just more and more. And it's like their doors are open to American filmmaking, but they're not all the way open because it has to have one of the three uh, expletives that I was saying earlier, like one of the three points in terms of a flat raid or having Chinese influence in the film. Yeah. So I think 34 films a year is a lot because like Chinese, China obviously doesn't take any of our comedies. Uh, they don't, <laughs> they don't take any of our dramas. So it's just all of our blockbusters and it's pretty much how many blockbusters are there a year around 50, I would say. So they're taking like 34. That's a pretty good percentage. Yeah. It's actually, we can go more inf- information on that in terms of like how many, like, like, is a fifty million dollar budget movie could actually go debut in China? You know, maybe, maybe because the Oscar movies, because a lot of times Oscar movies don't have a, like a big budget. Fifty million, forty million is reasonable, but that could be, you know, because it's Oscar buzz. People in China want to see what's prestigious, or in terms of like want to see Oscar movies as yeah. well. So that's that's probably a part a percentage as well. Oh yeah, but I, I, it's, it's mostly action, and I would say like comedy, like just hum- giant robots hum- fighting each other. Humor doesn't translate that well from. Across languages, yeah, that, that, so that that's like the yeah. thing that comedies generally won't. That's won't definitely cross. a cultural thing, not just China. That's yeah, comedy's tough um, when, especially with language barriers. Too, yeah, with, but China good for the bottom line in Hollywood, bad for the American viewer. I would say American blockbuster. The American blockbuster has is gone. It is. It's extinct. it's it's weird now. I'm not gonna lie. It is weird, and you know, it's 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 so funny. We're in a culture now of talking about how much movie this movie made and all about numbers and where it ranks. And it's just like, what about the damn movie? You know, what about, what about this movie? You know what I'm saying? Like, what about the movie? What about good trailers, John? You want to, re- uh, to review some trailers? Baby, I can't wait. Ooh, baby, I'm going to drive on to the next segment. Baby, it's cold outside. Drive it on up. Just kidding, baby. It's 94 degrees outside. Oh, hit the brakes. It's getting hot now. Oh, baby. (laughs) Trailer bait coming up next.